all right friends so i am dheeraj here and uh, there is one doubt which uh, many of the students have asked me so i thought i could record a video discussing that question and uh, so that we can all learn together right so you can see the question in front of your screen two particles a and b each having a charge q okay so now both of them have the same charge so they are placed at a distance of d apart so distance between them so is small d where should a particle of charge small q be placed on a perpendicular bisector of ab so that it experiences the maximum force okay now we need to understand few things here first of all let me draw a perpendicular bisector here a little bit like this so if let us say i place a small charge let's say charge q over here then what is the force on this small charge if it is on perpendicular bisector so you can see that between capital q and small q this first charge will try to push it away like this and the second one will also try to push it away like that so because these forces are equal and opposite the total force on the small q is zero when it is placed over here right now imagine this small charge q is placed at infinity like you keep going away and away from here and it is placed at a very far away distance so because now the small q distance is very large this distance is tending to infinity the force between capital q and small q tends to zero similarly the force between the other charge and small q becomes zero so there are two situations in which force on the small q becomes zero one is when it is at the midpoint of the line connecting the both the charges and the other one when q is very far away right so somewhere in between there should be a distance let's say a distance of x where the charge q is experiencing the maximum force what i'm trying to tell you is let's say if i try to draw a graph here let's say on the y axis the value of net force is and here is this x coordinate okay so when x is zero which is uh, at the midpoint the force is zero somewhere in between it will peak out and then as you keep going away and away the force tends to become zero right so there will be a value of x for which the value of force is maximum so that is what we need to find out okay so let us try to do that now i can find the force for any value of x right so first uh so the first uh, this thing for us would be to find out what is the value of f with respect to x right how it is changing with respect to x so if i keep small q if i keep this small q over here then the force between capital q and the small q would be this side right that is what we have learned that the force will be along the line joining the two charges right there will be another force from the other charge capital q so that would be also it will be like this okay let's say this is capital f like that okay now the sum of these two forces i have to do now in grade 11 we have learned that whenever more than one forces are there we can add them vectorially or we can just take components and add it along the x axis and along the y axis right so here what i'll do is that i'll place my coordinate system let us say this is my y axis and this is my x axis this is my x axis this is my y axis right so if i take components of the forces if i take component of forces along the x axis so what you can see here is that this angle is equal to that angle and the forces are equal right so sum of the two forces along the x axis becomes zero right so the entire force is along the y axis only right so if i add a force along the y axis that is my total force only the sum of all the forces along the y axis will become let's say if this is theta then it will be equal to f sin theta for the first one 
and the second one is also f sin theta right so the total force i can write here total force becomes 2f sin of theta i'll write total force as ft okay so what is the value of f if this is d by 2 then the distance between small q and capital q what will be that distance let's call it as r so that distance would be equal to root over of x square plus d by 2 whole square now i am finding distance because in the coulomb force expression there is the distance that you have to write right so force between capital q and small q would be equal to k capital q small q divided by r square that is x square plus d square by 4 right and theta is something that we have assumed right so we we need to replace theta in terms of x and d so in the diagram you can clearly see that this angle is also theta and sin theta becomes x divided by root over x square plus d square by 4 right so the total force becomes equal to 2k q into small q multiplied by x divided by x square plus d square by 4 raised to power 3 by 2 so this is the expression of force now you can clearly see that the force depends on x and we have to maximize this value of force right in order to maximize what we will do is that we will take a first derivative of this force with respect to x and equate that to zero this will be our condition for maxima here and when we differentiate and equate it to zero we will get the value of x for which the force f will be maxima right so differentiating it will give us now k capital q small q they are constant right so first i'll differentiate the numerator the derivative of x is 1 now if i differentiate it the denominator i'll get it now denominator is what denominator you can see here is x square plus d square by 4 raised to power minus 3 by 2 right so minus 3 by 2 will come at front and the derivative will become square plus d square by 4 minus 5 by 2 so if you differentiate with respect to x you will get minus 3 by 2 x square plus d square by 4 minus 3 by 2 minus 1 right the power will get increased multiplied by 2x right that is what we will get this into 2x right so the expression looks a little complex right but i hope you can see the logic very very clearly A by 2 minus 3x square. You can see that 2 get cancelled away. This is plus 5 by 2. And there is a denominator. We have to equate this to 0 to find out the value of x for which the force is maxima, right? So if I equate it to 0, you can see I can take out x square plus d square by 4 <coughs> raised to power 3 by 2 as common it becomes 1 minus 3 x square divided by this is what you will get 
right now if this expression has to be zero then that has to be equal to 1 so from here 3x square is equal to x square plus d square by 4 is coming right and uh, you get 2x square is equal to d square by 4 from here you get x square is equal to d square by 8 or x is equal to d divided by 2 root 2 right so if you are at a distance of d divided by 2 root 2 away along the perpendicular bisector at that location the force is maximum okay thanks for watching